Hello and welcome to another epic epilogues. Epilogues are little glimpses into the wider theatre world around a play. They are often quite reasonably cut from productions because they're talking to an audience who've been dead 400 odd years, but we like to do them anyway because we do everything. Today we're looking at the epilogue to Sophonispa by John Marston. It's his last play before retirement, and I'm not going into the plot because it's really weird. It's a fabulous play, but there are moments when it feels like it's a disturbing horror film, uh, but then there are these odd tonal shifts and it goes in a totally different direction. There are moments I, I would say it's a bit David Lynch at times, but that's, that's Marston to a T. You really don't know where you are, which is great. And explaining it really won't help you very much, I don't think. You can go back down the podcast feed and hear the prologue, which we have recorded as well, and some more unhelpful exposition probably exists there. The epilogue is spoken by the actor playing Massinissa, who steps out of their role and lightens the tone. So it's all got a bit heavy towards the end of the play, I think it's fair to say, and steps out to say, it's over. Change mood. And now, with lighter passion, though with most just fear, I change my person, and do hither bear another's voice, who with a phrase as weak as his deserts, now wield me thus formed, speak. The play is over, people. You can relax now. And now, in various ever so humble Mr Copperfield ways, the epilogue appeals for praise. If... If words well sensed, best suiting subject grave, noble true story, may once boldly crave acceptance gracious. And that's the first if. The thought progresses. If. If he whose fires envy not others, nor himself admires. Are you a good and worthy audience? You are, Mr Kipling. If. If scenes exempt from ribaldry. Or rage of taxings indiscreet may please the stage. If these things appeal, wait for it. If. If such may hope applause, he not commands. He, we, won't command you to respond if you enjoyed the show. Yet. Yet craves, as do the justice of your hands. Or, in other words, go on, clap your bastards. Please. And then a final plea of half-hearted take it or leave it. But... Freely, he protests, howe'er it is, or well, or ill, or much, not much amiss. With constant modesty, he does submit to all, save those that have more tongue than wit. With constant modesty, we're hoping everyone enjoyed the show, except smart asses, you can take a running jump. So, pretty much usable for any dark play you want a lighter epilogue for. Rather fun. This won't be the last you'll be hearing of Marston. There's a fair amount of material on the way, and I suspect he will be a mainstay of some of our future live shows. You want to know a little bit more about Marston? We've got a discussing episode further down the podcast feed about Jack Drum's Entertainment, which is also available on YouTube. A production was produced by a young actors company a few years ago. Almost completely ignored play. But for now, I've been your host, Robert Crichton. And following are a couple of slightly different takes of the epilogue to Sophonispa by John Marston, performed by the fabulous Fiona Thrale of Dashing Onions Audio. And now, with lighter passion, though with most just fear, I change my person. And do hither bear another's voice, who, with a phrase as weak as his deserts, now willed me, thus formed, speak. If words well sensed, best suiting subject grave, noble, true story, may once boldly crave acceptance gracious, if he whose fires envy not others, nor himself admires. If scenes exempt from ribaldry, or rage of taxings indiscreet may please the stage, if such may hope applause, he not commands, yet craves, as due the justice of your hands. But freely he protests, howe'er it is, or well, or ill, or much, not much amiss. 
with constant modesty. He does submit to all, save those that have more tongue than wit. And now, with lighter passion, though with most just fear, I change my person, and do hither bear another's voice, who, with a phrase as weak as his deserts, now willed me, thus formed, speak. If words well sensed, best suiting subject grave, noble, true story, may once boldly crave acceptance gracious. If he whose fires envy not others, nor himself admires. If scenes exempt from ribaldry, or rage of taxings indiscreet, may please the stage. If such may hope applause, he not commands, yet craves as due the justice of your hands. But freely he protests howe'er it is, or well, or ill, or much, not much amiss. With constant modesty, he does submit to all, save those that have more tongue than wit.' 